Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the CCL Week 3, Day 1, closing out with an absolute barn burner out of the Pacific region. we got the Arizona Wildcats going up against the Oregon Ducks, their green squad here. Arizona 3-1 and one after a loss to Colorado Black, a very good Colorado team last week, and Oregon still 4-0 in their divisional standings right now. My whole shift with me will be Cruz and Spaz in. Well, we've had a very interesting day so far. A bunch of uh, winless teams looking for their first dubs. Almost an opportunity for SIUE Black to find an upset win versus a undefeated Illini Blue squad. But coming out of the specific region, this one very well could determine who finishes in the top two of this particular division. Yeah, this one is definitely looking like it could be a heater. I mean, interestingly enough to point out, you said Oregon Green still undefeated. Not in the CCL top 25, though. So yeah, that should, that should be interesting because the Arizona Wildcats do find themselves there. So if they're able to pull out a win here over Arizona, I mean, you got to think that might hop them up in that top 25. Oh, it absolutely should. And I'll sit there and say that it absolutely should if you're voting out there. Say that much. But they have to get through that matchup first because, let's be honest, uh, taking the frame of mind here from this Oregon Green squad, they really haven't played anybody all that well yet. They played CSULB. That was their gold team. They smoked him. Let's be honest. They absolutely blew him out of the water. Same thing with Boise State. Not a terrible squad, but definitely not to the caliber of what we would consider to be maybe the top cut teams here in this division. And they played Wyoming, again, still without a win there. The only real caliber opponent that they played was Colorado at Colorado Springs, a team that very well may have an argument to be in the top six of this division to potentially be in that top cut once we get through the first split. But this is really the first true test for Oregon. And it's a tough one because this Arizona team, they did play that Colorado black squad really tight last week. Yeah. Really, really tight to say the least. I mean, they only lost what three maps or sorry, I guess they lost all three maps to lose the series, but it was <laughs> That's a, the only uh, three maps. That they yeah, lost it was with. a, uh, those are the only three maps they've lost the, it was a raid hard point. They lost two fifty two forty five. the control. They lost pretty bad three Oh, but the Moscow was also only a six two. So like definitely didn't get blown out of the water by any means in that series. And they picked up two maps for themselves. So Definitely, uh, they're definitely looking good, and I'm really, really focusing on the hard points for this series. I think they're going to be really good. Oregon Green, like you said, haven't really played the toughest of opponents yet, but I mean, they're coming in with five out of six of their matches being 100 point clubs in the hard point. Most points they've allowed is 131. Yeah, so I think that's good gonna stuff. Be, I think it's gonna be a really <laughs> good hard point. Yeah, good margins for sure. Yeah, this, this division A, I mean, 4 0 Oregon, 4 0 Colorado Black. And then you've got three and one for both Arizona and Arizona State Maroon. That's their second team. And actually, New Mexico State is also at three and one right now. So the top five are pretty comfortable at the moment. There are a couple of contestants that very well may find a way uh, to maybe potentially get swung out of the top six, if not potentially from the other point of view, get swung in. But those three teams that we're looking out of this division are Oregon Green, Colorado Black, and then this Arizona team. Probably going to finish top three likely without much consideration depends on what really happens between the three of them but for this matchup particularly as far as what the five maps are that we have to play and we've got a crossroads hard point for map number one a raid search and destroy garrison for the control and then we'll also go back to raid for the potential map four and miami would be waiting for us for that potential map five search and destroy yeah and i think i think again that this series i i, I gotta really think it's going to come down to the hard points maybe the searches might be a lot closer than uh, than what we think, but I really have to maybe favor Arizona in this series going towards just, just the whole thing. I think Arizona has played a tougher team so far, so they got a little bit more of that practice under their belt, and it should be really good. That's kind of one of the things that we talked about a lot with this Oregon squad from last year was the teams that they played in the Western Division last year were not exactly the toughest. Um, and once they started to play up against tougher opponents, they started to find uh, less favorable results. So, yeah, it, it's good that they find themselves in a much tougher division. That's to be sure. And then to be completely fair, the entire region, because let's be honest, they're probably going to be a top cut squad. You look over across the way as far as what's in Division B potentially waiting for them. You've got the gold team for Arizona State, the black team from Cal State Long Beach. Both of them are looking pretty darn good. Grossmont has also stole 4-0. and And then you've also got your, uh, your your B program of Oregon Yellow that's there. But the, the top three teams on both sides of this division are arguably all top 25 squads. So uh, this Pacific region is much more difficult than I think what we had in last year and even during the Black Ops 4 season. So, yeah, this will be a very interesting look. And for Arizona, I mean, hey, not only are you looking to potentially be a top five, a top 25 team, but you know, to get out of this group and not lose to both Colorado and Oregon, 
this is really it, right? This is like one of your last big matchups that you have in your division. So you would love to be able to take this with a W and make things a little bit more interesting with this. And well, we were about to get things started, but it looks like we will be going into a bit of a restart. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just, I think this match, I think it's going to be really good. Like you were saying, I'm really, really looking forward towards the second half of these, uh, of these two teams. Once we get the splits of the topper half teams, because like some of these teams going up against each other, that like this Oregon Green team, like you said, they really haven't placed that tough of competition yet. So I'm this is their first big test. I think Arizona is really gonna hold them to it as well. Both like both map records looking really good. And I mean, I think we can kind of get into talking a little bit about the crossroads hard point a little bit here now, too. So really what we're gonna need to see out of these two teams coming into this is really winning that P3 and P4 spawns. If you can hold down those spawns, you can really find yourself up 60 to 80 points at the end of the first set of rotations. So Definitely need to really focus on getting those. Hey, you know, for this Arizona team, this is a squad that is uh, new uh, for all intents and purposes towards uh, what we're doing here with the CCL first year that they've had. But some of the offseason tournaments that they've played in were actually kind of where a lot of people, I think, looked at this team and said, OK, these guys could actually do pretty darn well this year. Uh, so we'll have to take a look to see if that will indeed be the case again as I work towards potentially playoffs and likely I would say they'll find themselves somewhere in the top 64 but for Oregon Green you know you're going to get a lot of familiar names as far as if you're paying attention over the last couple of years so a little booyah captaining up this duck squad hopefully he's been able to put something together that is more favorable here for Oregon it'll be him Z-Loss, Zip and Taven going up against the Wildcats of Prof Reef a Beast and an Aggie yeah and it looks like we're going to get that that famous uh, blood bloodbath, sorry, off the top of this map, and uh, it's going to be just very heavily contested this P1. But uh, it looks like Oregon Green going to be starting off inside the hill right now, and we'll have to see. It's going to be the Wildcats who are going to have to try to flip these spawns out and uh, really just try to hope that they can get the spawns going towards this P2. Yeah, great mid map pressure here for the Ducks, just making sure that that rotation is at least contested. Z Loss still soaking up a lot of time. And he never really seemed to get full regen off and. Well, Z-Loss is able to go 3 and 0 find him number four. Good start here for Oregon to the pistol. Nearly a chance to find Reef, but the trade will still be there in Oregon. Still flawless. 22 to nothing. 18 seconds to play for it. Zip says this is time that we want. He'll make a play for it. And David watching over the top will find a double to make sure it goes the way of the Ducks. Yeah, and I mean, what they're doing great right now is they're not allowing Arizona to pass even the 50% mark on their map right now. They're holding down these spawns perfectly because they got that one player stuck in the back and they're just winning all these gunfights middle map. And this is going to lead to a lot of time, at least on this first hill. They're going to get at least the first 10-15 here before Arizona can even get on into the hill and contest. Gotta definitely start to wake up here if you're Arizona. Only five total kills to speak of if you're a Wildcats fan. 0-5 for Beast and 0-4 for Aggie. Taven is on seven straight, seven and zero. Oh, already has an artillery strike, holding a tight quarter. Knows there's one contestant nearby, but Rifa will put him down from getting the cruise missile. But let's be honest: if there was ever a map you wanted drinks, it's this one. And well, you might not even need him if you're Oregon. It's seventy to nothing, and still, I was about to say there is an zero and twelve combined force here for Beeson and Aggie. Finally, we'll get on the board, but my goodness, Arizona did not show up in this first two hard points. No, absolutely. And the worst thing about this is not only do they finally get on into the hill, but it's only with 15 seconds left. So, yeah, they're going to get that scrap time. But now Oregon was looking at the bigger picture. They're now set up for this P3 and this P4 rotation over. And they're going to be set up early here. It's going to be Z-Loss on the hill, and he's about to get contested on the outside. Great shots are good. He's going to be overwhelmed. But there is help here for the Taven up top. Good for another couple of kills. He's 10 in two for crying out loud. Every life he's been putting together kill streak after kill streak, it feels like. Still holding on to an artillery strike of his own between him and Z Loss. They've largely done a lot of the lifting. Zip not to be counted out though. Finds himself a double little spin around. Doesn't get the kill from behind. Prof finally able to get Arizona into this third hard point and it comes in due course. This is still 30 seconds to play for. Yeah, they get on into the hill. The issue is, is Arizona's spot is so close that they're really going to be able to test quite quickly. But Prof inside the hill. Going to pick up a big two piece there. Lock down a little bit more time here for the side of Arizona. But, or sorry. And now they're going to have to just try to push on out of this hill, really try to break up these back spawns if they want to be able to hold on to the time for this next hill. And it looks like player number seven, that's going to be ba Beeston up at the top. He was able to pick up one, make that a second before he finally falls. So not going to have the spawns to start off this next hill. 50-50 going on as B4 does open up. It's still contested in the back. It's number six of Reba that's really trying to win these spawns for the Wildcats. But as, as he's put down, his teammates from the front also dealt with. 
So even though Arizona did a nice job in the back 30 seconds of P3, what they were largely looking for, those spawns towards the fourth hard point, have been denied. Next hit trying to come through. Two players through fire. Taven watching the draw. He gets turned around. And as he does, the kills will be here. But only one player left, and that's Prof. Z-Loss will find him, get the elimination, and Oregon looking good in this fourth hard point. Yeah, and Arizona's going to really need to have to start picking it up this lane soon right now. They have two players, Bishan and Aggie, both sitting at 4 and 11 and 3 and 13. You're not going to win hard points with lanes like that. And, I mean, I guess a good large majority of it is they're not really winning these these rotation battles right now. If you're not winning the rotations, you're going to be running into players who are set up on head glitches, and it's going to be a lot tougher to win your gunfights. And, once again, we're going to be a team early set up towards this P1 hill. I mean, Lil Booyah has got 60 seconds worth of hard point time. He's had three total engagements. Yeah. He's just hanging out in the hill for the Ducks right now, which is probably not the most fun way to play the game, but it's effective to say the least. As he goes back down over towards Ice, wants to watch that mid cross. Oregon has been so good at winning that middle of the map, but now all of a sudden, Prof is in a position to where the Wildcats can actually take over that mid snow lane and get out of the hard point. Pretty close game, which is surprising to say, considering that you've got still two players at just 6 and 14, but. It looks like these and Nagy are starting to heat up just a touch, and it's keeping things tight here in this first hard point. Yeah, at least they're, they're starting to go a little bit even now, right? So at least you'd like to see that out of them. And they do look like they are going to have the rotation over towards this P2 hill. So good good second half of the game for them so far. They're starting off well, and this is really just going to be the test now for Oregon. The team's starting to heat up. Are you guys going to be able to continue with the same amount of slain that you guys brought in the first half of this hill? And, I mean, they do have around a 60-point lead going into this hill. Probably going to be close to 70. but. It's, it's just really going to come down to, are they able to break these back spawns now that they don't have them to serve? For the Wildcats, not necessarily a requirement to find a full 60, but you would love to take 45 plus at least. Zip finding two kills, maybe opening up some space here for him to work with through Ice. Reefa picking things up. He's on four in a row. Zeloss will find the kill that was up top through the top side of windows. Prof has to step forward into the hard point. Zeloss on a double. And now all of a sudden, the ducks are flooding from the high ground. Here comes the drop in. Prof finds himself up there. Reefa taking over. He finds one more, but the spawns will flip. And that will be good enough for an Oregon Ducks break. Yeah, Oregon. What they did so well there is they were able to pinch in from multiple angles. Pinch in on those players sitting in the bottom of the hill. Find the kill, pick up, pick it up, and now they're set up to, pro to probably pick up quite a bit of time here, at least these last 15 seconds or so. It looks like one player is going to be on the top right of your screen, trying to push down a contest, but he's going to fall as well. As I say that, though, Aggie also is able to find one inside the hill, so nobody really going to be able to pick up this last scrap time. Because as you can see, the Wildcats more so focused on trying to run down now and trying to get in towards this P3 hill. But Oregon, they're doing a good job to work their way into the front side of the fire garage. Spawn's still good for Arizona, but the break is going to be required. A good P3, P4 is a requirement now, if not a full necessity for Arizona if they want to get back into this game. Trying to clear at the back. Aggie dealt with, and, well, we talked about what they needed to do, and they do get bounced out from a favorable position. So now it comes down to, can you break? Z lost 24 and 14. Cuts down three for one exchange in favor of the Wildcats. Spawns one more set is going to be good here for Oregon. you got to deal with this because you have to remember that the Ducks still have score streaks to play with, even if they do get bounced out. Yeah, and uh, two of the players on the Ducks actually do spawn out top uh, to the top right of the mini-map, but not really going to anything because... The rest of their team was able to take the inside the hill, so it really made their rotation back over towards this P4 hill quite easy. So now, just going to be contested here inside P3 to end it off for these last five seconds or so. And it, we're going to be looking at, again more at this bigger picture, this P4 hill, the hill that you gained so much time on. Oregon did a great job the first time through. They were able to hold it for a ton of time, and we'll see if they're able to do it again. It's going to be low booyah inside the hill. Team kill coming through from Arizona. They did have numbers pushing through this top three, but how about it trade it back in kind? Prof got enough damage into one bullet from Taven taking out a teammate. Now it's just down to who wins these next engagements. Zip is good for two, but Prof is still alive. Taven not wanting to challenge yet, wants to wait for a little bit of help, and help has arrived. A little booyah, good for one, not gonna get a second, but Zeloss picks up his trade. Back and forth we go, but not enough convincing trades for Arizona as Oregon get right back into the hard point, and they'll be over the 200 point mark yeah and arizona can't really like afford to give up this this last bit of time here they're gonna have to keep sending bodies to try to at least confess or shoot the players off of the hill and they they do have spawns right now and they are set up in towards this middle hill but they're gonna have to do a good job of trying to hold on to this and as i say that zip is making a very good point through the back of the map not able to pick up the first one gets it on a bastion and but it, oh, actually gets the second as well nice shot from the zip there 
Gonna turn around, find his third in a row before finally falling as well. But uh, again, it's those couple kills there it opens it up for Oregon to get back on the hill. And at this point, it's just every single second that Oregon gets is gonna feel like the dagger is pushed further and further. And if you're a Wildcats fan, they will eventually break through that hard point and more importantly, swing into the P2 side of the map. Nice team shot there coming from Rifa and Aggie. Let's be honest, uh, Aggie's still having a little bit of a slower game, but he has to pick it up where he started beast, and he's also still minus 10, but again, picking it up, it's just maybe a day late and a dollar short here. Rifa trying to play aggressive through P1, falls, Aggie, next one up, player nearby at Z-Loss. He will only take down one elimination, and the hard point stays white for now. Beast it in the hard point, three kills for Pope, looking for a fourth, able to find it. Maybe an opportunity to work towards streaks, and that will be a requirement because, let's be honest, Arizona needs to find a full 60 here. They need to get a break on B3, and they'll likely need to see this map stretch for another B4. Yeah, they absolutely do. And if they do end up going to that P4, I do believe the side of Oregon still does have two streaks on their side. So it's definitely going to be really tough for them to deal with. Oregon, for the most part right now, just trying to do it without using the streaks and saving those in their back pocket for in case the game gets a little bit dicey later. But it, again, it's just going to be prop inside the hill, holding on strong. It has been a pretty good hold so far for Arizona. And it's just going to be a one-on-one -on -one for the hill right now. Because both teams having three players coming off spawn, trying to break on into this hill. It's going to be prop holding strong for now. But Oregon is going to players. Gonna get dicey. There is still numbers here for Arizona. They'd actually spawn in one more time. Wait a second. The Wildcats are gonna get over 200 points here. And there's still 20 seconds to play for. We're gonna be looking at nearly an even game, but Taven comes through. He's the last contestant for the Ducks. He gets bounced out, and now Oregon have to chalk the scrap time and hope that their setup for P3 is gonna be good enough. Rifa, first one in, tries to make a rogue play, but cut down from behind before he may have had an opportunity to take down Z-Loss. So, and full scrap time confirmed for Arizona. Now it's just down to can they break. Yeah, and Arizona is really going to have to try to make sure they break these spawns this time. They've had a hard time doing that every other time. Zip, first contestant gets dealt with, and well, break have they. Still, spawns for Oregon. Reefa tries to influence that, but gets taken down quickly. Trades favoring the Ducks. He lost for two, but now Prof. One, he wants the hard point. Prof finds three in a row, but from behind. Zip is able to get the kill. Over 240 go Oregon, but Arizona have the spawns. The Wildcats, they're trying to wolf pack forward. Taven gets a double, but he cannot contest the hill with an F4. Little Booya on the way in. Prop tries to stay scrappy. Spawns are so good for the Wildcats. And oh my goodness, have they maybe done enough? Maybe not quite. Oregon's able to get back through it. The two for one beast that has to challenge. And he finds it the double. 249 for Oregon. Can they slide in? Yes. And Arizona. Oh boy, their hopes of one of the most dramatic crossroads comebacks I've ever seen stifled just because of the support differential through the first two rotations. Wow, man, if they had a, like you said, if they had a better first two rotations, this, we could have been looking at a completely different game here, Shift. That was, what a finish to that game as they really started to heat up towards the end of it. I said, you've got to really feel like that was on the back of the poor performance at the very start from their two players. I, I can't fully remember names right now, but they, they started they started off so slow. And if, if those two players heated up just maybe a little bit sooner, you got to think maybe this game could have gone the way of the Arizona Wildcats. I think in a lot of arguments, you would have said absolutely would have, right? I mean, it, it's a really tough first rotation. P3 to P4, they essentially get completely nixed out of time. Well, first and second, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, it was like 68 to nothing. So you can't start down that bad. And if you're not able to put together a good full 60s on what are your money hills, you know, P2, P4, which the second rotation, eluded them it makes that comeback effort just so darn hard i mean it was 200 to like 140 at one point in time i think it was actually closer to like 220 to 150 not a great margin to try to put together a comeback especially considering how crossroads typically plays but a big bounce back effort cut just a touch short and yeah aggie and beast and that what it was like they were 0 and 16 between the two of them to start not exactly what you want to see i think overall if you're an arizona wildcat fan yeah, but I mean, I guess the one bright spot you can really look at for Arizona right now is they were able to claw their way back into that game. So hopefully being able to build up a little bit of momentum, their guns are warm now. So hopefully going in towards the rest of the series, towards the search and hopefully getting towards the later half of this game, because I would love to see a game five s and out of these two teams. Hopefully they're able to pick it up towards these next two respawns that we're, that we're going to head to eventually and uh, really be yeah. able to play out the way that they were in the second half of that game. Tough scenes, tough scenes. But again, Search and Destroy is coming up next year for us. It will be played on Raid. We've seen a lot of Raid Search and Destroy here on the Alpha stream all the way throughout, even including that second series that we just kind of got through. And for the Search and Destroy overall, this would be, I think, in a lot of instances, need to be where Arizona needed to kind of punish, I think, overall, when it comes down to what Oregon's been able to provide. Because to be fair, 
this is where Arizona has not just baked their bread, they've also buttered it. Uh, so, I mean, a 6-3 to three win on against Wyoming, 6-1 to one versus Utah, 6-2 over UCCS. And then in that five-game series that they played versus Colorado Black, on Raid Search and Destroy, it was a 6-3 win for them. So in a lot of people's minds, I think this has to be uh, what largely would be Arizona's pick. Don't know who's got host or whatever it happens to be as far as the connection is concerned, but this is a map that you'd be feeling pretty confident on if you're a Wildcat. And this is one that they absolutely have to win as well. Uh, if yeah. if you guys are that good of a Search and Destroy team, you got to be picking up your searches. It's just really what it comes down to. It's it's those fa- that famous saying search wins championships and i mean it's what they're good at so if they're go- if they're able to go three uh, if they're able to as you said it they were winning quite a bit of them so if they're able to continue on that streak they can definitely keep on winning in this league only issue for them is they did drop a game 5 earlier so or earlier in the season so if they right. yeah, they got to try to be able to pull it out if they do end up going to a game 5 today as well yeah, that was that Moscow search and destroy that you were mentioning on uh, against that Colorado Black team, that map five. I think it was like a 6 2 score overall. But, um, you know, as far as how Oregon has gone through search and destroy, uh, granted, the one time that we've seen them, or two times, pardon me, that we've seen them play on raid search and destroy just historically over the statistics that we're looking at, they played both Boise State and CSULB Gold. A 6 2 win and a 6 1 win in both of those instances. So, not to sit there and say that Oregon is not exactly favored or unfavored, if you want to call it that, on this map mode combination. I think it's just when you look at what Arizona has done on this map, beating a team like Colorado Black, this has to be a repeat where they're able to take down another very formidable opponent in their division here on that raid search and destroy. Uh, we are still waiting on lobby to get through, but again, just remember if you're looking to get involved with what's happening across all things collegiate COD, make sure to head over to the website, collegecod.com, and you can check all the standings. We're currently looking at that Pacific division, and Cruises Pass, I'm not going to lie, the Pacific region as a whole, I think is arguably going to be one of the better regions. As soon as we get bottom cut, top cut differentiation between all the other regions that we have, I'm really keeping my eye on this Pacific division because I think that Colorado black team is better than where they're currently rated. I think this Oregon green team should be ranked. And even though Arizona is rated with a loss, I think it's still merited because they have played pretty darn well. And then on the other side, you still have Arizona state gold. You have CSULB black and you've got Grossmont. All three of those teams definitely top 25 in my mind. Yeah. And I mean, as we were talking about it uh, before the series started, it was, we are really looking forward to hopefully when this split comes through and we're going to see all these teams playing. Up oh yeah. Cause I, I cannot wait to see some of these four and O teams playing up against each other to see who can stay undefeated in this league. Because again, this is such a big league and being able to finish in the top half of it and qualifying for playoffs and not having to play in through that play in round. It's going to be huge. Yeah. And I mean, just be honest, the vast majority of our playoff teams will have to go through that play in regional qualifier because we're only taking the top tier of each of the regions directly to playoffs. So it's going to be a grind. It's going to be a battle. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. It's still a couple of months away before we get there. But as we continue on this conversation, let's make sure we go to chapter number two of this best of five. Again, raid, search, and destroy. It'll be the Ducks on the offense first. And this looks to be a premeditated setup over towards the A-bomb site. Yeah, it looks like we're going to see one player set up and a couple players going towards this bottom. But again, he's going to get very aggressive through the bottom of the map. He's going to be able to find one. Bastion also going to be able to get a kill as well. So little little two versus three action for Oregon State here on offense. And they're going to have to, uh, they're going to, have to be able to find a couple kills. Make that a first one for Tavin there as they look to set up, grab this bomb, and hopefully get out of this A site because they are kind of pinched in here right now. And Beeston, who did push forward underneath the bedroom, has given up that position, is now going to play on the divider of the pool stairs. Stun comes up top. That was actually, pardon me, a flashbang that comes through. Taven completely. You saying Taven or Tavin? I was going with Taven, but Tavin actually makes sense. I'll go with Tavin. Meet you there. Full <laughs> flank around the backside for Arizona. Little Booyah caught literally in a corner. Tavin up top. Good for one. The second. No, Beeston. SMG just a bit better than the Krig in that gunfight. Yeah, it's a tough one to win with a Krig over an AK-74U. I feel like any gunfight's hard to win over an AK-74U, though, right now, with how that thing shoots. But, again, yeah, just good, good plays from them here as they were able to push in, get a double challenge on Tavin, and, and really close out that round. And they opened it up very well by getting aggressive middle map and being able to pick up and get a lot of just map pressure. Yeah. Tavin was working on the full ace, only able to find three. Beast similarly, so 3-0 start for him. And do you give him the rock here? 
Looks like maybe not. It's going to be Prof who takes the OBJ out of spawn. And it's going to be a three-man hit immediately over towards the ring. Beeson's actually the first one here with an M4. Zealus is going to be over towards the outside ledge. And he gets dealt with Rifa first blood. That's the second time he's been able to do that so far in two rounds. Zip really can't do much, but just wait and hope that his teammates in the middle of the map can get some action done. Yeah, you got to think those are some nasty shots that over the top of that there. But Zip going to be able to get a kill there, start to even us out a little bit here. Is there going to be again in a two versus three here for the side of Oregon Green? And Zip is looking for the head of, uh, of Beastion, not able to find it himself there. So it's going to leave Tavin once again, all by himself, one versus two. Bomb planted. Post plant set up over towards Laundry. Sees the first. Guns him. 10 HP. 1v1 situation. Both pieces of utility to play with here for Tavin. Sees Beeson on the corner. Gets a lot of damage dealt. Semtex over the top. It's a little too deep. Beeson. Regen coming for the repeat. But no, Tevin! Finds himself another three kills in the round. But this time in clutch form. Plenty of time for a defusal. And he's single-handedly kept Oregon in the first two rounds. I was about to say, he's single-handedly keeping, uh, keeping them in this thing right now. Great stuff out of him to start this game off. And, I mean, six and one after, after the first two rounds. Can't really ask for much more from a man. Nice gunshots on that van there, too. Able to clean him up. And, I mean, I can't even take anything away from that first kill of the player top laundry. That was absolutely nasty shots to XM4 coming in. Interested to see what they try to do here on offense. See if they give him the bomb here. See if he can start working his way towards some streaks. You got to keep in mind, Arizona played really fast on the first two rounds. This time, looks like for the Wildcats defense, it'll be a little bit more passive. Pretty solid back line. And you've got Aggie, who's the first one forward in the middle of the map. But over towards the perspective of where the bomb is leaning, it's another 3-1 split with Oregon focusing on A. Yeah, and it's just going to be Z-Loss looking over this middle A point and really hasn't been able to find anything besides Bishan, who is running around back there. But Bishan's just going to back up, kind of play his life, and just wait to see if Arizona or see if Oregon tries to get aggressive and push on through. And it just does, not looking like we're going to get very much from this right now. Finally looking like Zip going to be moving up the map a little bit here. Beeson will be scouted out. Rifa was trying to play a flank through the B ring. Gets caught just outside Art. Prof able to trade back the initial blood, making it a 3v2 situation. Still in favor of Oregon. And this will be likely a plant at A. The only real player that could contest this would be Beeson. Nice Semtex comes through. Z-Loss gets tagged pretty heavily by it, but still sticks for the plant. Gets it off successfully. Trophy system will go down, and now it's a post-plant setup for Air. The Oregon Ducks, Booyah, mid map. Knows there's a player nearby, can't quite lock him down, but at least shrugs off the play from a flank, and now Arizona need to go. Yeah, I love that positioning from Booyah there to, to sit in Zig to wait for a player from the side of Arizona to try to hit that flank. Shuts it down completely. Even though he doesn't get the kill, he's able to push him back. Gonna have Z-Loss now down in the corner, able to trade that kill as well. So, oh, and he gets the second as well. A little bit of a burn there on a Bishan. Another round going the way of Oregon Green. I'm not really oh, sure how the ball gets the second kill. I mean, that's that kind of, one bullet, no problem. But this one? First nice shots. How's your good for B lost? Oh, my. Yeah. Jeez. Good grief. Absolutely frying right now with this Craig in his hand. He's actually only sitting at two and two right now. Those were his first two kills he's been able to find this game. But, I mean, couldn't have come at a better time. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're going to see a... Uh, B hit actually now coming in from Arizona as uh, three players pushing in towards this B. It's really only going to be uh, from the side of Oregon, just as if here at the moment, really trying to hold down and contest, and he's able to find the first blood. Absolutely melts Rifa. It's the only player forward for the Wildcats. Now for Oregon. With a numbers advantage, they're also taking away the middle of the map. Zip will catch intel on where Beeston's playing, and that might be all the information you need considering his performance so far through the first three rounds. And Arizona had to be forced to make a decision. And there's really not a good one available to them. No, they, they are pretty pinched in that back garage right now. Bishan just trying to find anything he can. Pushes out. He's going to get dropped as well. So it's just going to be prop now in top art. Trying to look at these players over top of that raid statue. And he's just really not going to be able to find anything right now. They've done such a great job of just getting up to a point where they have a good amount of map control and holding them down. But prop going to get some nasty shots in through middle map there. Going to be able to pick up one. Can he find the kills on a little booyah here as well? No, the pressure is on right now for Oregon. They do not want to let these Wildcats breathe whatsoever. Prof has gotten little Booyah down to about one shot. What feels like a million different times. And how about this? The 
These kills mid-map, it's allowed an exit to get this bomb planted at A, but Aggie trying to hold off the reinforcements for Oregon does get cut down. So it's a 1v2 situation. Bomb planted for Prop and Zip oh. has hopped it. No reason not to. It's a pretty safe location. They know that he can't be behind. Z-Loss will clear in front, and Oregon will go up 3-1 to one after the nice stick on the bomb plant. Yeah, yeah I mean... You you, you got to love that play out of him there. Just to, just to immediately know, just to hop onto the bomb. He's got his teammates overwatch. You know he had to push it to the left because you didn't see him go to the right. Great play there. Exactly. And I mean, and the pressure for Oregon has been just as good as I was going to say for Arizona so far, Cruz. I mean, the first two rounds, it looked like Arizona was coming out saying, this is our map. Play our tempo and get off of it. And Oregon said, bet. Yeah, it, it really seemed like the first two rounds, Arizona brought that faster pace. It was favoring them a little bit now, but it looks like they've slowed things down, and that seems to be where they've started to struggle quite a bit here. Uh, nice shots right underneath the truck there for Z-Loss. Four in a row for him. Zip finding the second kill. Taven the third. Just down to Prof. Okay. No chance. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a beam. So I was wrong. Apparently, Oregon decided they are not going to run it and slow down this time. We're going to push the fight to, to Arizona, and we're just going to rip their heads. Yeah, Z loss really stepping up now as well. And I hate to say that this is a slow start for Arizona, kind of like it was in the hard point, because let's be honest, it was a fast start for him, but five kills in a row for Z loss. David's still seven and three. Zip is on three in a row. I mean, you look at all the stat lines. I mean, again, I was just happy to be here. I mean, second map in a row that he really hasn't been required to do too much for his team. And now it's on to Arizona. You need to win this round. And really, to be on that, you need to win the non just following this as well. You really don't want to go down 5 1 or 5 2. So a lot of pressure on the backside of Arizona. Shots for Zip, lots of damage, no kills. Trying to get away with Rifa, and that'll be good for first blood. And he's been blooded almost every round, it feels like. It, Four it really, out of the five, at least, it feels, for sure. Yeah, it, it really does feel like he's been blooded quite often, and it's, uh, it's just a dip now again. Finding a second, he's... I feel like not only has Reefa been getting a ton of first bloods, but or getting first blooded, but it's been Zip on the other side, who's been getting a majority of these first bloods. He's had a great map here, and it looks like Oregon's in a great spot to hopefully go up 5-1, to one, as they are once again pinching the Arizona Wildcats back in their spawn. And I, I hate to say it, but I doubt that they're able to pull some magic and get out of this again. Well, they're going to make the right call. The problem is Taven is not playing inside top bedroom. He is on the ledge. And there's number one. There's number two. Thanks for playing. Oregon on map point. My goodness, what a showcase. Yeah, Oregon is... We we were hoping that they were... We, we said they were coming into this, and we were hoping that Wildcats were going to put up a good showing here in the Search and Destroy, especially going off of their Search and Destroy record. But Oregon right now is just showing they are the real deal when it comes to this 4-0, and, oh, and they absolutely deserve to be in this top 25, I think. <laughs> and I'll say this much as well. I mean, you have to keep in mind that this Arizona Wildcats team took Colorado Black to five. So if this continues, not just here in the search, but also in the control, that means that both Arizona and Colorado Black sitting in the top 25, this Oregon team is currently smacking the squad that took Colorado Black to five. So I don't know. I throw that out there for all of you voters, but a first blood actually self-inflicted for Oregon means that they need to work through this seventh round in a 3v4. Yeah, and uh, it was an unfortunate team kill that came in with the nade there as well, but little Booyah, he's going to have to start to do something a little bit more, I guess, this round here. He's not just going to be able to get by, but just, uh, just watching here. Is the team not going to be able to get the first blood? I mean, I guess they kind of did. They got it on themselves, though, this time, and it's... Uh, it's Again, it's just going to be them. They control middle map, though, once again. This is so important on raid. We say it all the time. But to, to be able to just have the experience to get the control of this middle map and then be able to push on out anywhere that they feel like. And right now, it just seems like they're happy just chilling middle map. <laughs> well, they're going to try to push through this. Again, the real decision comes to which bomb site do you want to go to. And the answer will be A. Reef is the first one there. This time, he's able to get first kill will be immediately traded be sent up top through the money window sees one go tiki can't quite see little booyah who's going to get this bomb planted the problem is how do you exit when you've got aggie on one side beasting on the other the answer is you don't so arizona will extend the map to at least see around eight with a successful defense here a little bit gifted of around there zip unfortunately with the team kill again coming through at the start of that round so we'll have to see what they're able to do but i mean hey maybe that might give wildcat some life here 
a little bit of breathing room, but again, it was a little bit of help, right? <laughs> Hate to see that mistake come back and bite them in the butt, though. Right. Yeah, for sure. We'll see how things go. Again, uh, Arizona, after they came out the gates trying to push the tempo, have largely slowed down on their offense. Will that continue to be the case? Because let's be honest, the, a lot of their aggression has been straight to that B site, and the large majority of the gunfights that have taken place just around and inside that ring have not been great. And that's what I'm about to say. If you want to try to get aggressive still and try to play with that tempo, let's see what we can find over by A. Bomb's going to be carried by Prof, and there will be three members here in total trying to watch over this A site. They will get information that Taven is playing the outside of Tiki, and that will be maybe enough information for Arizona to say, we don't really want to go raid boss's direction. Let's back up and try somewhere else. Yeah, it, it just feels like they are so un, like unconfident right now in winning these uh, winning these big long-range engagements because they keep just giving up map control and map control and more map control. Like it's just every round it just feels like they're they're giving up more and more of it. Zip again going to be set up here on the raid statue and he's just waiting to see if anybody tries to push on in. We've seen him get first blood from here multiple times and Wildcats they only got 40 seconds left to work with here. They're going to have to make a decision soon. And they need to win a gunfight. That's the big thing. Zip will be the first one up defensively. And he might just get caught from behind. No, Zeloss watching over the top of him. Zip will the turn. Cross. He will find both, though. Okay, the opportunity starting to brew here for Arizona. You've got Aggie watch in the middle. Prof with the bomb has to make a call, and he's going to plant this for what will likely be a laundry post plant. And as Aggie pushes through, he finds the third kill just down Taven, and he turns a 1v3 into a pretty quick 1v2. But the first kill, please don't overchow that if you're Arizona. My goodness. Let him make the play. 35 seconds and still 1v2 situation. Yeah, I mean, right now, all all you're doing if you're Tavin is you're just going to try to make your wrap in through here. You have to try to get one of these players off guard. He was really close to being able to gun that player. I believe it was Aggie who was sitting inside those pillars. Not able to be the case, but he does spot him out. So bo uh, both players on the side of Arizona should know that he's here now. As you see, Prof start to wrap back over as well. That's going to be a very tough 1v2 to win with both players sitting on head. He's only having 11 seconds left, and this is probably around here. And it's going to probably yeah. move. It's Arizona. Tavin's going to find them both, but Arizona going to pick up a third round. Yeah, you know, I hesitated to say it, but there were a couple of moments in the hard point that it felt like Arizona was over a little bit. In uh, another instance, you know, right here, when Taven finds that first kill, obviously from here, there's no time to play, so it's kind of like whatever, but it's one of those things that that still sticks with you, that you essentially just let that guy 1v3 get the kills on you. The only contestant that really won the round there for Arizona was the game clock, so... 12 and 4, and still on map point, or pardon me, match point here. No, map point. I was right the first time. Yeah, and uh, they're get, they're going to have to win a defense here for the side of Arizona. Uh, they were gifted the round last round off of not getting the first blood. Well, this is an interesting spot. I've never actually seen anybody do that yet, so a nice little, little spot coming from that there. He's going to try to take some shots in on Bishan, and it just looks like we're going to try to see another 8 hit coming in from Oregon here. Watch out. This one is laying prone in Tiki. And largely what needs to happen is just everyone needs to throw shoulders and to see when the hit is coming. But just as he gets that communicate, he peeks, gets taken down by Z Lost. There will be a trade. Taven dead. Zip now mid map. Bomb still being held by Z Lost though. And he's still wanting to make this play happen over to A. So Zip, he needs the clear out space mid map. And not just here in the middle by Rock Garden, but he needs to make a play through Kitchen in my mind. Yeah, you'd like to see him make his play through Kitchen, hopefully drop that player, and then be able to move on over towards Money, really just clear out the area. But again, it looks like the side of, uh, of Zelos is going to turn the play up, try to get in, and Zip, here he goes, makes the push on in, is able to find the first kill there. And he knows that there's a player now back basketball, so they've got information at least on one. Bomb goes down, and they've got a 3v2 in post plant position here. This is good awareness from Zip. Only thing you have to worry about is the contestant coming through the board. There's a slide through Prof, almost able to find him, down to 26 HP, but staying alive. And now it's just down to Beaston. Can't wallbang that there, friend. And that will be enough for Oregon to take their sixth round. Six to three. And this Oregon team right now is really not giving Arizona much of a chance in either of these two maps. You go up 5-1 in the search, and then you're up by almost 120 points in the hard point at one point in time. So... Any opportunity for the Wildcats to really kind of, you know, adapt or adjust has been completely eliminated from the get-go for this Oregon Green squad. Yeah, and I think what I'm what I'm worried about now for Arizona Wildcats is going in towards this control. You know, 
looking back at that series that they had against uh, CU Black, it really was a, uh, it was the control really was the only map that they got really blown out and it was a 3-0. So yeah. it might be one of their weaker modes. Hopefully they're able to pull it out here and we get to see a couple more games in this series, but it might not be looking too good here. Garrison control is what's looming for us and maybe looming a little bit darkly here for the Arizona Wildcats. We'll see how things unfold, though. We'll send things to just a brief break. When we come back, we'll jump into map number three. Ready to this. Welcome back there, friends. A little bit of a live look into what's going on at College Cod Bravo. Wyoming going up against Colorado State. Both teams searching for their first win. And as you saw, the Cowboys currently up 1-0 in the series and a 4-2 search and destroy in Moscow. But for this one in particular, here, Cruz Spaz is the garrison control. And last that you were kind of largely kind of hanging your hat on was that mark that Arizona got blown out against Colorado Black team on control. Granted, they played raid in that last best of five from last week. Yeah, and it's... uh. I think it's going to be tough here for them. They seem to be getting outslayed quite heavily in this Oregon match. And as we know, control can be a very slay heavy game mode where you really need to pick up a lot of kills. So sure. if they're not, if they're not able to start picking it up, those, the, the two players on their side who are just have been struggling throughout this whole time, they, they just, it's going to be tough. They really need to be able to pick up these kills here. Hopefully try to get Oregon into some sort of a spawn trap while they're on defense and, Really what Garrison comes down to is you got to win an offense unless you have defense for that round five. Yeah, either you have to be very convincing under defensive rounds or at least keep things close when you get to offense. But try to hang your hat on, let's just get to round five is not exactly what I like to call a winner's mentality. So we'll see if Arizona can maybe put something together on their offense to steal this map away. But it will be Oregon's defense first that will be on board with. Z-Loss underneath. Not going to be able to find any success as Aggie and Reef have on the first two kills. Prof moving forward into lights. Maybe wants to take a challenge. Thinking about it. Maybe not. Julia who walks into his line of sight. And that's good for not just a third, but a fourth straight kill for Arizona. And they will lock down that first tick of progress. Not yet at B. But they've actually double hit this. And it will be actually a first tick of progress, but over at A. Yeah, actually, and you gotta love that coming in because I've you gotta find the ace to be a little bit harder to pull off. And you see why as the as the angle comes in from Zlosh pushes into top green. Not only can he shut down that push over at people, that push is over. Oh, oh my God, Zlosh able to pick up two, shut down the first push, shut down the A push. I think get another two over towards B. Great shots coming from him there as he's starting five and two and really starting to heat up in this game. Almost the only player with kills for Oregon right now. I mean. <laughs> That's the only reason that they have not lost the B zone, let alone maybe more ticks of progress over at A. Prof, he's good for two mid-map. Arizona secured their first tick of progress at B, and with that, likely the full zone. I mean, there are three players that are stacking this. Oregon's going to have to chalk and rotate over to A. And they got a four-life lead right now for Arizona. Looks like they are going to choose to try to hit this in towards Cobble, so... All of Oregon, though, set up and ready to go as we're going to see three quick kills coming for them. And it's just going to be by himself left now. Z-Loss going to clean him up, and that's going to be a quick four down for Arizona. Yeah, largely, it's just been the Z-Loss show for Oregon. Seven and three. Little Booyah finding two kills, playing from the backside of spawn on the tank. But Zippo and five. Taven's only had three engagements so far as he's the solo defender over at A. And the next hit for Arizona. It's starting to come right through the square. Zip is technically behind this play. And he will take down one kill as we spot lost. He's got four in front. Not going to get the second. Backs away. Semtex keeps him low. And at least for now, Arizona, they may not have found success in this hit, but at least they haven't given away this mid control. They can come back and reinforce and try again. Yeah, I, I like that from them. They lose their first two, so then they slow down. They push it back quite a little bit. They know they have to do the right here. Zip going to take the challenge. He's going to be able to get one. Booya finds one as well as Z loss. And that's going to be another quick three down. And as I said before, it was a four life lead. For the side of Arizona, now down four lives. Got to make a play. Get something going in your favor here towards the day zone. Zip holding close. Started 0-5. Now 4-5 and on four straight kills. And he's going to sneak through vent. The play for Arizona is going to be topside green. And they're being held off just by Taven. Zip from behind. When does he make the call to try to make this pinch play happen? It's going to be now. Here's kill number five for four in front. He's going to get number six of the pistol. Zip is able to find seven in a row. Give him streaks to coat. And beyond that, it's going to be Oregon. Only need to kill off another 12 seconds of the time. 
Just as you thought, an offense was looking pretty decent for the side of Wildcats. Zip shows up, goes on a nice little seven spree there, and Bastion trying to, or sorry, Bastion trying to push on into the hill, and it's gonna get shut down. Actually, contested right now, but it's just Reefa left alive. Uh, alive, he's gonna fall as well. But. Uh, did not notice Prop there as well, so Prop's gonna hop on in, trying to buy a little bit more time, but the inevitable finally happens in Oregon. Gonna pick up that first round win. And honestly, after that start, it was looking a little shaky, but a good hold from the for that agent. And the SMG line of Zip and Z lost a lot of the reason why. Oregon keeping in this position in the first place. These were four straight kills for Z loss, finding the, really the only kills at that time that Oregon even had. Yeah, so that's he... going to be good for the defense for the first round. And Zip, he took some liquid inspiration from that because he was on seven in a row at the end of the round. Yeah, and Zilas, again, like he contested over at light, shut down that first push there, pushed through top green on that bridge, got the player, the two players at A, and then pushed into the spawn and was able to find two more for the side of Oregon. So he really, really had to be the case for why that they were looking at that first round. And now we look to see them on offense here, see if they can find any success going towards this B site, as it looks like that's where the hit's going to be coming in first. David, he lost to help out mid man. Starts the mantle, Rifa finds the elimination. He's the last Wildcat holding on for this B zone, at least initially. And Zip is able to find the kill. So Oregon, first tick of progress, looking pretty imminent. Slide shell coming out, Prof denied by Taven on three in a row. Will be a little bit of help from mid-square, though as a crossfire is set up. First tick of progress is good, but the second will be stalled. Just down to Booyah, can he actually solo hang on? And he will. Now help coming in the back. Second to progress is good. The third one being worked on. There are only two Wildcat players in front of this play. So the Booyah pops up, wants to take shots over towards light, and Prop has to respond to Z-Loss. Does well to find the first kill, but that will largely be about it. Prof last player will fall in Oregon. A four-man feed, and with that extra 60 seconds on the clock. I mean, I would have loved to have seen them after they got that. They got the three players on just to push straight through over towards the same site to try to get some pressure over here right away. It's not going to be the case, though. So it's just going to be Tavin in the back of the map here towards the satellite. And, I mean, Booyah, you got to think it's getting scary if he's starting to pop off because he has been the only player on the side of Oregon who has been a little bit slow through the first two games, and he is 11-4 and four right now. Hasn't really had very many engagements, and now they're going to hop on this, say. get the triple stack, and this round is over. Yeah, I mean, the little Booyah hasn't been required to do too much. His teammates have done all the heavy lifting for him. I mean, he's playing the anchor role of the hard point. He's playing the backline guy on the search and destroy. And finally, he's like, I got, let me get out, let me get involved here, guys. He just puts himself on the B zone. And he was holding his life for what probably felt like an eternity, but boy, did he do it well. Gets the capture and then pushes on in to make sure that Arizona feels contested off their spawns. And a large reason why Oregon are up 2 0 is because of the play that we just saw right there from little Booyah. And, I mean, they looked really good at holding that A site through their first defense. So, it's I think it's going to be tough for the Wildcats here. They're going to have to pick this round up and then another one after that. Zip also still has an artillery as well. So, even yeah. if they do get any pressure over towards that A site, it's going to be really tough for them to be able to hold on to it. Beasting up top. See Zip down low by the tanks. Zip is willing to find one kill. We'll eventually need some team shots to come through with the playing. Z loss. Good for two. Reefa last left alive, 1v1, takes his first stick of progress, tries to bait on out, but Taven is very heads up and aware about the play potentially happening, almost able to find Aggie through dark. And once again, who is it? Little Booyah, next player in. Contest will come through, that'll stall the clock. The next up four in hand, finds the first, has to back down just a touch, help is coming, he lost on the pit. Hello, what are you guys doing? Go to bed, why don't you, if you're already laying down? Two kills for Zelos in Oregon, already pushing forward into the Arizona spawn. Yeah, and with only 58 seconds left and them pinched back here right now in their spot, it's looking like a very tough round for them to be able to win. Zelos able to pick up another one, pulling out the Diamati, going to find his second there. Fourth in a row, going to try to push on through tools here, not going to be able to find anything. But, I mean, it might be just a little bit too late here as they were finally able to get a wipe. But with only 39 seconds left and still having Tavin in the top of your spawn, it's going to be really tough for them to break out of here. These are decent kills, though. Clearing the middle of the map, they do it in three for one exchange. Where's the last player? It's Elon. Where is he? Of course, he's in the vent. He hits the same route how many times? It's like the fourth time this defense that he's played this route through vents. And unfortunately, oh. Aggie puts a trophy system down just as a nade was coming over the top. And that will essentially give him self inflicted death. He lost a little booyah. Another pitch play coming. Taven also involved. That'll clear up the B zone. And now, once again, Oregon is in the spawns. 
They will not find much success for the trap, but they've killed off a lot of time. Just 17 seconds remaining, and this could be the last hit for Arizona. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be the last hit for Arizona, especially when you have Tavin oh doing goodness. this. Picks up a three-piece, coming in, going to get the body shots in, too. Put a little respect on Oregon's name. They say, we want to be in the top 25. Put us there now. They, they came out, and they made a statement the series shift. A statement? To say They're the putting least. putting on, I mean... They are on a mountaintop with a megaphone. <laughs> that is as definitive as we could have potentially seen from two teams that, at least in my mind, I had in the top 25 initially. But this Arizona team, after a tight five-game series with Colorado Black, uh, barely showed up at all uh, when it came down to this series versus the Oregon Ducks. Unbelievable. And I think he even got to say Oregon might even be better than that Colorado black team after seeing their performance here today. The fact yeah. that Arizona was able to take Colorado to five and Oregon comes out and they three Oh smack them around here. I get not very, not very pretty at all. Not at all. So that moves Oregon to five and O oh in the Pacific division. A they will be playing up against GCU purple. I believe to finish their evening uh, in week number three. And then when they come back, they've got week four versus Colorado state should be an easy win there. Arizona state maroon likely the same case. It won't be until week five that Oregon will play up against that or probably week six, actually that Oregon plays up against that Colorado black team. So uh, they'll be waiting a while. Lots of time to prep for them is that's probably the last real big matchup that they have, at least at this first split again, Everything will be split up into two different essential sections. And after this first split has come to a conclusion, the full region comes back together. The top teams will play up against the top teams. The bottom teams will play up against the bottom teams. And when we're done with all that, we'll go to playoffs. Top 64 total teams will be there. You have to figure that Arizona will likely be one of those top 64 teams in this region. But uh, definitely some homework to be done because a very atrocious start in the crossroads hard point would eventually be their demise. The raid search to destroy, down 5-1, not great. And then a 3-0 here where outside of their first offense, there really wasn't a good look for them whatsoever on this control. Yeah, and I mean, even on their defense, you you, you got to win defenses on Garrison. It's just an absolute must, especially with how hard offense is. Not able to pick it up. But I mean, I still got faith for this Arizona Wildcats team. They, they got N NMSU Esports again this week. So hopefully they'll be able to pick up a match win there. Keep them keep them on the win the right path going in towards week four. So they definitely still got a chance here, and I mean, you, you can't you can't totally count them out yet. And if they do end up making playoffs, you know, they just got to work on it. They got to keep yeah. their practice up. And if you never know, man, it is Call of Duty at the end of the day, and things can turn at any time. Well, I'm looking at it this way: if you're Arizona, you've now played through both of the top teams likely in this division, so you could go to the lab, do some workshopping, and really kind of try things versus teams that largely we expect them to get through without much problem. But Maybe we're over-evaluating this Wildcat team just a touch because that's a convincing 3-0. That concludes our coverage for the evening, though. The Bravo stream, I believe, is still going on. Wyoming playing up against Colorado State, but do not go far. If you're a first-time viewer here with the CCL, you're not going to want to miss tomorrow. We've got top 25 matchups pretty much throughout the entirety of the day where the Rutgers Black team starts the day off playing up against Carlton and the Ravens. And then we go down to a battle for Florida. The Central Florida E4 Knights playing up against Florida State's Garnett team. It's their top team. And then we've got a battle in the Midwest, another battle of Illinois, actually, as the SIUE Red team, they'll play up against the Illini Orange team. So the B teams played up against each other today. The top teams play up against each other tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss those. But for now, we say farewell. We'll send you over to College Cod Bravo, and we'll catch you right back here tomorrow for week three, day number two. Until that point, though, hope you guys all keep holding it down.